All righty. Hello, hello to all our uh, wonderful listeners and viewers, because we're on YouTube, obviously. And uh, welcome to Season 3, Episode 7 of In The Salmon Podcast. You know the drill. You know how we run. Hasith, welcome aboard. Um, I'm actually so excited for this episode. There is so much to cover. And we're gonna. And today I'm the host, so we're going to talk about something I absolutely love more than anything else in the world. Um, and that is, of course, <laughs> uh, Test Cricket. Um, and, uh, look, what, what a, uh, wonderful, uh, test match we've had in the last, I guess, well, at the time of this recording, uh, it will be around uh, 24 hours. Um, mm-hmm. New Zealand and Sri Lanka, two test teams, two countries that probably deserve to play more test cricket, um, and have shown the world why they do deserve a bigger seat at the table. Um, the first test match of this two test series was an absolute thriller. I was, you know, watching this every single ball of, of that of that test up to day five. I was glued. I have never been more excited by <laughs> red ball cricket than I have watching that game. And of course, being a Lankan supporter, you know, you want to see Sri Lanka win. Um, unfortunately, they did not prevail. But oh my goodness, the fight they put on for. New Zealand to win that test match off like zero balls remaining, it was like, it was real like a rumble in the jungle, thriller, you know, thriller in Manila kind of cricket. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest, my expectations of Lanka and how they were going to perform in this New Zealand series was, was quite low. I, I thought this game would be done in like two and a half days, um, given mm-hmm. how historically Sri Lanka doesn't do well in, in overcast swinging green top conditions. But my, my goodness, they... They uh, have exceeded my expectations, and you know I just want to unpack this game. You know there were so many points where New Zealand had the advantage, Sri Lanka had the advantage. It was like a seesaw, and uh, you know I just want to get your thoughts. Like you know th- this is what Test cricket's about, surely. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was the what are you what are you what are you asking me exactly, Nuan? Oh, uh, well, just went on. No, a look, solo rant there. I was like, shit, man. Should I, do I have to sign something at the end of this? What's going yeah. on? You want to tell me something? Non-disclosure, <laughs> non-disclosure statement. No, I think, um, I think what I want to ask you is basically, you know, like, did you ever imagine this test match to go to play out like it did? Let's be real. Like, did you ever think that this game would play out the way it did, given you know how how you know uh, you know professional New Zealand's test players are and how Lanka have not played test cricket for nearly eight months? Did you ever expect a game to pan out like this between these two sides? Yeah, honestly, no. Um, it was an absolute cracker, and I think, um, yeah, I think it was it was really, really good. And and I think the most important thing, and and I guess sort of like uh, the biggest takeaway for me, I guess, as if we were talking to someone that doesn't watch Test cricket, was yeah, you didn't, you didn't, you never knew what happened, what was going to happen. The result mm. was so 50-50. In mm. the balance, right up until the very last ball, but not even that. But even after that ball was bowled, mm. we had to go to the third umpire to get the result. Yeah, and yeah. um, that is that's the first time I've ever seen that happen in a test match. Um, yeah, you know, go to the third umpire and you know all these things. But um, I think that's a really good sum up of the potential of test cricket. Yeah, and um, you're right, Lanka hasn't played cricket, uh, test cricket, in about eight or nine months. And yeah, um, all credit to those boys because they they showed that um. You know that they they have the ability. They have the ability yeah. once if if presented um, in more test games. I think uh, Lanka have the have the goods to perform results like this. Even though it didn't go their way, um, no yeah. one can doubt the the entertainment factor, and and that's what we play sport right uh, yeah. to entertain. And they definitely they definitely did that. Uh, I think you know it's 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 an interesting loss because no one's actually like I guess blaming Lanka or saying oh Lanka just you know Lanka was just terrible like. Sri Lanka played a really, really strong game up until the very end. Yes, there were there were crucial um, mistakes, but then again, there were mistakes on New Zealand's part as well. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think drop. Uh, you know, we, in the last innings when Dick Weller dropped uh, Kane Williamson when he was on thirty, to me that was crucial because yep. because Kane Williamson was the glue in that New Zealand side. He just literally, I don't know how a man can play with that much pressure and like you know he didn't even break a sweat it was just very ms Dhoni vibes the, the whole, yeah. the, the, the whole innings, you know to be fair i think he was like um because we talk about even like uh the day prior uh, we lost like 20 25 or 30 overs mm-hmm. um on day five 
So I yeah. think for for Williamson, and I said that you and I obviously we've got a we talk offline all the time about about games. I yes, I, I caught it quite early. I was like, man, Williamson is just going to bat the whole time. Yeah, I caught it the day prior. He's, he's not even going to worry about the you know the mm. runs. He's mm-hmm. his his goal mm. is to bat all the way. Yeah, and the and yeah. the result will be the result. But he's yeah. gonna he's got another he's got a few boys in the tank that can just tee off. Yeah, and we certainly saw it with Daryl Mitchell. I think he scored a six off the first ball. Mm. Um, we saw what Matt, Matt Henry was able to do in the first innings, scoring a very yeah. quick seventy odd. Mm. Um, so Williamson, no brainer. It, it looked good on the outside, and you know, come the result. <laughs> but I think yeah. not even he was expecting it to go down the way no. that it did, and he was just doing what he needed to do. Mm. And that was to be Captain Cool, the Kiwi Captain Cool, Kiwi Captain um, Cool, King Kane. Call him King Kane, Captain Kane. What are you gonna What are you gonna call him? Um, no, nah, look, a lot it looks of respect... very good when he when he pulls it off, huh? Yeah, love, look, a lot of respect to Kane Williamson. Um, I mean, he's arguably New Zealand's greatest ever modern day batsman. Like, it's there's yeah. some there's some record or stat. He's like the most. He's got the most test runs. He's gonna blitz every record. Yes. Um, but like you know, he played he played a near flawless game. Um, he's very like he's a very like street fighter kind of cricketer. Ken Williamson, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what you mean. Tell me, what like, do you mean? He's like, like, he's, like a, he's like a real street fighter. Like, he's there for a scrap. You know what I mean? Like, he's. No, I don't know if I can agree with you on that. Well, no, surely. Like, you know, he's not. Okay. I, I, I would like not Ken. be backing Kane Williamson in any form of scrap. I don't know. <laughs> but that was that was a real scrap, though. That he literally took it to the end. That's what I mean by scrap. Like, like I don't know. Yeah. He's the kind of bloke that's gonna like. He's gonna play some ugly innings, but he'll end up winning it for his done. team. You know. Gets it done, and uh, and you know we talk about the finish, but we also need to talk about the way Lanka stayed competitive throughout that game. Yeah. Um, it wasn't just Kane Williamson's hundred. Uh, Angela Matthews scored an amazing hundred as well um, in the mm-hmm. third in the second innings for for Lanka. That was a really really important uh, hundred um, mm-hmm. because at one point Sri Lanka was looking a little bit wobbly. They were actually they were four for ninety five. Okay, uh, four for ninety five. At one point, um, at that point, you know, Prabhat Jasir, the night watchman, had been dismissed, so it was looking wobbly. And uh, mm-hmm. Angela Matthews just came in, you know, played a really, really good innings, very test match innings, you know, strike rate of just under 50. Um, he kept things ticking over, and you know, he just shows why he's like the senior guy in the team, like why everyone needs him, and why he's arguably, uh, after in this current era, he's arguably Sri Lanka's best ever test test match cricketer. Um, I mean, you're. I mean, in, in my opinion, no, you, you make that face all the time. I didn't like, say anything. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> I didn't say no, anything. Like, look, I mean, I was looking at the numbers. You know, I'm a very numbers and, and stats oriented guy, and you know, mm. he's he's pretty much the only bloke that averages 45 in Test cricket with the bat for Lanka. Yeah. Um, mm. You know, Chandimal is not there. The rest are in the 30s, and so you know, Ch- uh, Angela Matthews is like our only like sort of competitive sort of guy. I mean, Dilith is a very good batsman, of course. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, obviously, uh, Angelo's played, uh, you know, he's played for a while now. Um, mm. So he's got those numbers behind him. But, you know, Dimut Karnaratna averages 39.54 in Test cricket, which is, which is pretty decent average considering where Lanka has been in Test cricket. But Matthews is obviously that guy that, you know, he keeps the team together. He's, you know, he's got so much experience. And that 115 yeah. was purely experience. That was his experience showing. Playing yeah. in those conditions, you know, mm, for sure. Um, he really showed what he was able to do if his body allowed for it. We've seen like we've seen him yeah. lose a few years, a few years, yeah, yeah. Uh, due to you know hamstring and and, and other injuries. Yeah. Um, so you know, I think probably for the last eighteen months or so, you know, most of us Sri Lankan supporters would have counted him out. We would have been like, all right, this is going to be like a real soft closing yeah. of the curtains for mm. you know a, a great batsman that we had. Um, oh, a great yeah. captain and a great mm. servant to to the sport yeah. uh, and to the nation, but it's such a testament to, I guess, sort of his his brute ability. You know, he's come from like a very strong school cricket side. I remember him coming yeah. up uh, through yeah. the ranks, and he's been trained by the likes of Mahela and Sangakara. Yeah, so he's got he's got the goods, and um, you know, he, he's he's not a spring chicken anymore. He's definitely yeah. in the twilight years of his career. So um, it was a real real battle. And if anything, I reckon that Matthews Matthews is a scrapper. Matthews, oh yeah, like, I'm I'm putting Matthews in as a scrapper for no, me. He, well, I agree with that. I mean, we've we've seen him before, way back in 2010, uh, when we were in high school. That classic Miracle Melbourne game. Yes. Uh, that's where we that's where we first saw his uh, Street Fighter abilities. But but look, <laughs> I, I mean, 
Kane, Kane Williamson, I think he's recently arrived in that category. He's always been a bit of a guy that gets bulk runs, but but we saw a different side to Kane Williamson. But uh, definitely Angela yeah. Matthews has always been that kind of street fighter character, a bloke that will never say die, never give up. You know, mm. even when everything's against him, backs to the wall, he'd be like, no, nah, no, nah, I'll find a way out of this. So, um, yeah. So, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just blown away by that test match, though. The way it panned out, um, you know, the way it just unfolded, it was just like a, it was like a seesaw of, of, of momentum the whole way through. Um, you know, I, I guess the one thing that slightly disappointed me about Lanka was, was obviously on the final day. There was a point where New Zealand suddenly started attacking, right? So Daryl Mitchell mm. and Ken Wilson just started like smashing Prabhat out of the park. Um, yep. You know, and you could see a little bit of panic set in to Lankan team. Yep. And uh, you actually mentioned this before offline, and you always said that Dimut Kanarath is a bit of a defensive captain. And mm. um, we saw that a little bit come out. So he started putting people on the boundary. He started telling Prabhat Jasri to bowl like a, a leg side, a, le- a leg stump line. And, you know, I wasn't really feeling it at that point. I was like, why are you doing this deal with that? I understand yeah. that you want to save runs, but this is too much. And it got to a point where Pravada was bowling so far down leg side, the umpire started calling it wide. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then, and you know, they were uh, filed a complaint and then uh, Daranjay Dissil filed a complaint, but I could see what the, why the umpire was going to start calling it wide because if you're going to bowl that negative and prevent any yeah. opportunity for a game to unfold, then then fair enough. So that was probably the one criticism I had of Lanka's approach on the final day. But then mm-hmm. things started to come back together when Asita Fernando bowled. He's, he's, a, he's a guy, he's good, right? He's a guy mm-hmm. that I really want to give him a shout out to. He literally single handedly brought Lanka back in the game. Yeah. Like he saw all this negativity happening. He's like, no, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to come in there and I'm going to, I'm going to shake it up a bit and, and, and get something to happen. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's because of him. I, well, I wouldn't say cause of him, but he definitely instigated uh, a, a bit of self-belief, you know. Mm. And and suddenly Lanka came back into action, you know. <laughs> um, I, I, felt like, I felt like the way he was bowling, he was saying to his teammates, look, we're not done yet. We're not done. You know, this, the game's not over till it's over. Um, but look... He reminds, you know, me, he, he reminds me very much so of uh, a past Sri Lankan bowler, Dhamika Prasad, um, oh, not yes. too long ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. For me, him, they both bowl a very, very similar style of bowling. Um, yeah. And Damika Prasad uh, was actually really, really well renowned for his grouping. Um, he's probably yeah. one of the best, uh, you know, medium fast bowlers Lanka's produced in the last yeah. probably 20 years or so, especially in the mm. Test arena. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember the Test series against England, I think the one that we, that we, that we won, um, they were likening his grouping to that of even Glenn McGrath. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, and, you know, he's just he used to be so good. Um, and I think we're seeing a breath of uh Prasad in uh in Asa de Fernando, and he's very, oh, yeah. very young. And yeah. um, he, yeah, you're right, he bowled with such intent, yeah. and that's why he was able to string together a couple of Yorkers that really put Sri yeah. Lanka in the, in the, in the box, the bo- box seat, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, <laughs> you and I were chatting offline and we're like back and forth. Like You're like, nah, this game's done. I was like, nah, nah, there's still a draw. But like, yeah. you know, like, I'm, I mean, I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying that's what makes Test Cricket so interesting, right? This is why this game, this format of the game exists because, you know, when you have an enthralling final day like this, you know, all the results are possible. You have to watch everything. You can't yeah. take your eyes off the TV screen. And and this is why this format of the game exists. When when, when games like this are produced, it, it's, it's, it's great for cricket all around. And speaking of this, I do want to mention another test match, which was the complete opposite and yeah. would be absolutely detrimental to the future of test cricket. And that was the final yeah. test match between India and Australia in the Border Gavaskar Trophy. They played on an absolute road. Yes, Kohli got a ton. You know, everyone got tons, bulk tons all around. But everyone but... got tons. <laughs> well, it felt that way. Are you, uh, are you uh, I guess, sort of like uh, belittling Kohli's ton, are you? No, it's but quite, what? quite important. I would... I would never, I would never belittle His Majesty King Kohli. Um, <laughs> um, no, I mean, you know, it was obviously a bit of a road, and uh, I don't know, it felt like a bit of a dampener of a of an end to that Border Gavaskar series, um, a series where India ultimately was going to end up, you know, on top. Um, mm. But you know, it was. I mean, it's good to see. It's good to see players get hundreds, but but that game was was. Uh, was absolutely like it was just dead from like day two i reckon because when you when we saw australia bat out two whole days almost two, two and a bit days i was like yeah this is this is done i mean 
Yeah. Why do they make why do they make pitches like this? Why do they why do the curators want to produce matches like this? Like I don't understand it. Yeah, I think they really dropped the ball this series. It's actually um somebody <laughs> In the words of Russell Peters, somebody you're gonna get hurt real bad, man. Like somebody, yeah. <laughs> somebody lost their job last test. Yeah, you don't wow. want to see something like this. You want to see some kind of consistency, even within a test series. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. it's been too like it's you can't even call what's gonna happen. And the fact that you yeah. know Australia better the two full days, mm. it's it, that is, it is really really detrimental to, to to test cricket, and it sucks that it's it's consistently happening in Asia, um, yeah. notably in Pakistan and India. Yeah. Um, especially with with the BCCI being so heavily involved and being, mm. you know, you would you would hope that they, I guess, sort of make it like a like an even playing field. I get you need a home, you know, a home ground home advantage, advantage like yeah. mm. but you still want a result. This yeah. this past test has been I've never been in the last probably like five or six years so disappointed yeah. in in a test series within India because it's just it's just I don't even want to watch. I yeah. don't want to watch because. Yeah. Nothing's really happening, and you love yeah. Test cricket, Nuan. What did you feel about it? Did you did you did you watch thirty overs one day, or did you watch I any watched, of it? Like, I watched about twenty fifteen or twenty half an hourish because I just like yeah. watching cricket in general. And yeah. you know, it, and the cool thing is, you know, the, the India Australia Test and the Sri Lanka New Zealand Test are happening at the exact same time, right? That's so, right. so as soon as one Test match finishes, I switch over to the other channel. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was just so dead. Like the the game was just meandering along. You know, I saw Shubman Gill getting a ball. Um, and that's when you realize, okay, they're, 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 they're just taking the piss now. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, the pitch had a very white sort of texture. There were very little cracks. It was just very, just like flat. Um, I mean, there were cracks, but like, they're not the kind of cracks that are going to scare you. Right. It's just typical. It's just typical flat. Yeah, cricket, it's you consistent know, like yeah. straight on. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's really sad. I mean, I don't know why this keeps happening in a border Gavaskar series. I mean, India is the most powerful cricket nation in the world they would surely have the funds to produce a good pitch that will cater for a result i mean even sri lanka produces good pitches okay like yeah. like you know i'll tell you something they actually put you know before lanka came to new zealand the reason why i did a bit of reading on this and the reason why they they played so well in new zealand on that green top and why it was so uncharacteristically sri lanka is because prior to that series they'd mm. been training in uh like nur elia or uh, there's a ground in like a in the in the mountain regions of Lanka that they have produced and it replicates English and New Zealand conditions. It's cold up there. Oh, really? It's cold up there. It's got a green pitch. And so the Lankan team's been training up in the mountains of Sri Lanka. That was like they made a training facility um, mm. to help prepare Lanka for, for New Zealand conditions. But there it goes go. to show that you can still produce SEMA friendly conditions in the subcontinent, right? Um, you know, provided that you actually want to produce that, right? Yeah. Um, you know, India, India, especially go towards like Nepal or like those mountainous regions, they have grounds up there, they have test match venues up there, and they can produce mm -hmm. SEMA friendly conditions. Um, and so there's you certainly know, uh, no shortage of resources. <laughs> no, there's not, there's not there's absolutely no shortage of resources. So, yeah, that's, 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 that's the question. No, no, to me, finance is not the issue here. I think it's, it's purely more like the entertainment value that the Indians are looking to get out of a cricket match. That's how I see it. It's sort of waiting up between giving, giving their own guys an advantage, which is fine. Yeah. And the entertainment factor. And they've really, they've, they've literally seesawed in the biggest yeah. possible way. And they haven't yeah. found that like equilibrium ideal... point that we're all looking yeah. for. Right. Yeah. So that's what it is. Because like the, what happened was like you know obviously the ICC rated that pitch as poor, so they, then they massively overcompensated and then that's produced right. a, and then produced a pitch that's like the it's like literally playing cricket on the Monash freeway, yeah. <laughs> you know. That's right. um, but it's interesting, you know, and and you know that's why this episode is called a tale of two test matches because it's literally like chalk and cheese. One of mm. them was like the ultimate you know rock star entertainment thriller game, and the other. <laughs> And the other one was just like it was I just, hate cricket. Um, makes you hate cricket. Right? Watching watching cooking shows with your with your nan on a, on oh, a Friday night no. instead of going yeah. out with the boys. That's yeah, yeah, literally. Um, so I think there's things to be looked at there as well. I mean, but you know, unfortunately, now that Lanka did lose that game to New Zealand, they're out of contention for the World Test Championship final. So India mm -hmm. is definitely locked in. Australia is locked in. Um, that should be a pretty good Test match because we're playing in England. Um, I think at the Oval as well. Um, mm -hmm. So it'll be it'll be like a whoever wins that whoever wins that mace that trophy. It's going to be the first time for either either team. So that'll be good. 
it'll be it'll mean a lot for India if India can win it because India has not won a global cricket title in the men's for the for the men's in more than a decade. Did you know that? When did they not, win last? The, the last thing, the last no, the last global title they won in 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 men's cricket was uh, the two thousand thirteen Champions Trophy. Twenty thirteen. Okay. Mm. So it's been more than a decade. Ever since the retirement of MS Dhoni, India has never won a global title. <laughs> so was he was he the captain in twenty thirteen? He was. Yeah, he was the captain okay. of India's team in that twenty thirteen uh, mm. champion uh, Champions Trophy victory. So you know. A lot, a lot at stake there, and uh, it's why we like Test cricket. But I just, I guess, on the topic of Test cricket, you know, um, Angela Matthews uh, did an interview, and he was actually lamenting, or he was quite disappointed <clears throat> with with the way the ICC is scheduling Test cricket for countries that are not the big three. Okay. Yeah. Um, he was saying that look, you know, Sri Lanka only gets to play five or six Test matches a year now, whereas mm -hmm. the likes of India, England, and Australia play like 15 odd games a year right yeah um yeah. and uh he then brought up a really good point stating that you know for example craig brathwaite of the west indies he's been playing he's been playing test cricket since 2011 and he still hasn't reached 100 100 test caps whereas yeah joe root debuted in 2013 and there's like 130 odd test caps to his name so this imbalance is going to be something done about it i mean like what are your yeah. thoughts like, i mean you know how can we get Test cricket to an equilibrium point where everyone gets to play an equal, equal uh, an equal number of games, or is that just too impossible now? Yeah, I think it's. Um, I mean, there's no question as to why, you know, the the big three are like one of the best test sides in in the yeah. world because they get that much practice, they get that much sort of importance placed on training in yeah. that sort of form. Um, they get funding when it comes to you know, you know, really prioritizing that. Where I think for like nations like sri lanka for example and and even new zealand it's like an afterthought from the from the cricket association for that nation it's not really yeah. where all it goes mm. and because of that it's you know, what, what can you really expect you know what i mean it's like mm -hmm. it's like um it's like an associate nation with really good players not getting the funding to play how do you expect them to play yeah um to answer your question new one how can we fix this going forward it's a, it's a real tough one yeah. i think um i think the icc has done something that is how can I even word this? It's fair, but it it is um it is dangerous in the yeah. in the uh, I guess sort of in the way that they've sort of uh, allocated points in terms mm. of ranking. You know, mm. test series with more tests, yeah, they get less points per win and things yeah. like that. Yeah. But it sort of doesn't incentivize incentivize giving nations more test matches in a series because it doesn't mm. really matter. They still have the same equal opportunity to make the the World Test Championship. So perhaps oh, if yeah. they, you know, the ICC need to sort of put their foot down um mm. and sort of i guess sort of come to a better agreement or something something more like they've done they've done okay now you yeah know, we've, we've trialed this for like this will be the second uh world the second, the second cycle yeah the, the second That's cycle right. of the yeah mm. so you know for the maybe the maybe the fourth and the fifth they might mm. try to do something where they mm. they intensify these countries uh or the icc kind of pushing for more mm. test series or at least more tests within a series yeah. at the very yeah. least right yeah i can understand mm. if it's hard to get you know sri lanka down to like south africa yeah and bangladesh and india and australia you mm. know but at least give them like three to four tests so yeah. that that's a big ask but yeah if you're not going to give them more series give them more tests more right? tests exactly yeah uh, yeah I, I would say like a minimum of three tests at least because yeah. like, when you play a two test series it just feels like it's just unfinished you know um, yeah I'm, i've never understood why even if it's T20 or if it's ODI or test, there's only yeah. two games. Yeah. Because then, like, like, you tie the series. What is that? Yeah. Like, it's, 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 it's really, it's a really weird one. Um, yeah. So, you know, and, and yeah, and Matthews was like, look, you know, it's not that Lanka can't play test cricket. Lanka has obviously shown that they're very competent at test cricket. They, they value test cricket, which is important. Um, there was a time, you know, before pre COVID times where I was worried about the future of Lankan cricket because it seemed like, all these youngsters coming through just didn't care about playing tests but now i can see that there's some uh there's a real sort of drive to become good test cricketers like i, I was yeah. really impressed with that Jed De Silva was batting and yes. uh, kusal mendes was batting these young guys are doing really really well so mm -hmm. you know the, the issue is not quality it's the quality is there you know new zealand have shown that new zealand defeated england right <laughs> yes. in an absolute the, nail biter new um, zealand right? actually single-handedly holding up test interest <laughs> this they year are. 
New Zealand, yeah. New Zealand deserves so much more respect than what the ICC is giving them. These guys won yeah. the first edition of the World Test Championship. Yeah. They won that. Yeah. So New Zealand, you know, I'd love to see New Zealand play three Test series or four what Test series. Take on? What, what do they need to do? I don't know. I'm, you know, you, I'm, I'm just going to go to Dubai and like run up to the ICC headquarters and just be like, hey, listen, we have a chat, you know, <laughs> come on our podcast. <laughs> You're a bold man. I'll leave you to yeah. that, man. That's um, that's, so, yeah, that'd be a one-way ticket, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, well, I don't know. But look, t- test cricket's in a very weird place where like all these countries that are getting lesser test matches are producing better quality cricket than... Yeah the countries that are playing a lot of it and have the have the money and they're just not doing much with it so there needs to come a point where you know we find we find a way to you know bring the likes of a south africa pakistan sri lanka new zealand you know these those four teams alone have produced some remarkable test careers over the years they, they deserve mm-hmm. to play more test cricket um yeah. and you know I, I it just it just brings it's just a really good talking point you know um mm the 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 craig brathwaite and joe root comparison that really that really blew my mind yeah you know i mean i guess the thing is and mm. and this is something this this like you know from a marketing point of view and, and everything yeah. like that mm. i know you know sri lanka used to come down to australia quite often back in yeah. the day when we had an absolute elite absolute elite team yep um i guess what these nations that don't get prioritized seemingly need to do are, are keep battling and keep winning tests or at least yeah keep producing good contests mm. so they are more marketable and they're more, I guess, sort of appealing for countries like Australia. Mm. You know what I mean? Like if, if Sri Lanka, for example, can do, can play the way that they have now mm. for the, for like another two or three series. Yeah. The autumn, and, you know, regardless of if they win, you know, three of the next four or whatever it is, they win like a couple mm. and they can show that they can actually battle when they do quite well. And this yeah. isn't just Sri Lanka. This also is also West Indies. And this is also the reason why Craig Bathgate hasn't played Hasn't gotten the opportunity to have get hundred tests, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Because they have not produced quality sides, so there's yeah. no real I guess sort of challenge. Mm. Nobody's going to tune in because they know it's going to be one sided, right? Mm. So that's what yeah. these countries and these players need to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the only way out of this sort of predicament. I think that's yeah, that's one side of it. But you, you can't actually, you, but you also can't get better if you don't get enough exposure as well. So that's yeah. that's it's like it's, it's like one. a it's like a dark, tough one. But at the same time, like. There is talent in these countries. I mean, you're you're probably like a you're a bit of a talent agent. You're always telling me about <laughs> the latest <laughs> up and coming. Sign me up. Yeah, yeah. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> so I I don't know. I think chess creates in a very peculiar state uh, to me. It's just like it's like on the one hand, there's people that want. That it's on the one hand, it's super entertaining, and then on the other hand, like the teams that we're sort of relying on are not pulling their weight, kind of thing. Um, yep. You know, like. A two test series just doesn't cut it. I think Lanka deserves at least a three test series. South Africa deserves a three test series. Sure. Um, but at the same time, there is obviously that stigma around certain sides just not being up to the mark, you know? I think and, West Indies is probably right on top of that list. You know? Oh, yeah. Because Mike yeah. Brathwaite has been like, he has been an absolute ro- rose in a, <laughs> oh, yeah. in a garden bed full of weeds, let's be honest. Yeah. And I don't want to disrespect anyone when we, when, but like he's been a clear, shining, shining light. Yeah, in the West Indian Test team uh, for many a year now. Um, yeah, so I mean, he needs to find a partner in crime or partners in crime mm. um, to sort of help West Indies out of the rut that they that they've. I would say ultimately put themselves in, whether it be yeah. in players themselves or management. But um, mm. something's definitely going to miss. And um, you know, Craig Brathwaite has been playing for a long time. Mm. Who knows how long he's got left? Mm-mm-mm. We would hate to see him have, retire and nobody suitable take his spot. Yeah, in the West Indies. You know what I mean? Here's another interesting stat, right? I had a, I've got, I've got a Kiwi mate who's been giving me a lot of flack um, about this loss, and he knows who he is. <laughs> but anyway, um, he was saying uh, the last time Australia went to New Zealand for a Test series was nearly mm. nine years ago. So the last time Australia came to New Zealand to play a Test series in 2015. Right. Since then, there has not been an Australia New Zealand Test series in New Zealand since then. So mm. there's there is a, there is a severe imbalance in uh, the scheduling or like how they organise who plays who because Australia doesn't go to New Zealand for eight years but in that time they go up to England they go back from England they play Ashes you know they they you know they've been to England so many times in that in that period so so it just goes to show that it's yeah it's it's a it's a matter of of, of I guess uh, mismatched priorities in my opinion um, and you know yeah. I hope. I hope the ICC look at test matches like this uh, between Sri Lanka and New Zealand and that last one between England and 
New Zealand and, sure. and noticed and, and you know, they realized that these other countries that are not getting enough cricket are actually producing the best quality cricket. At that's least, just my like you and I wish we're, we're Lankan fans for sure. Yes. But at least as a cricket fan, give New Zealand some more tests. A hundred percent. Right. 100%. They've earned it. This is just from a completely unbiased opinion. These boys have deserved it. They've earned it. Give hmm. them some tests. We'd like be, we'd like to see them down in Australia, maybe next oh, season. Oh, dude. Absolutely. Season, right? Absolutely. Yeah. New Zealand is one of those like they're just one of those teams that like they always do well. Like they're always around. They always perform well. But like nobody ever gives them the credit they deserve. This has been like they're a... too nice, no one. They're too <laughs> nice. That's what it is. I, I I'm being so serious. They like... play. They, they 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 are the real gentlemen of cricket, and oh, it's dude. partly. And I'm blaming Kane Williamson. He's too damn nice. Yeah, you know what I mean. Good bloke. I know. Yell at someone. You know, do something. Shake your fist on the ground. Do something. Know. You know. He's, he's just too <laughs> much. I think I think one of our friends is like he he reminds he reminds um he reminds of a of a te of a teddy bear. He's just a big teddy bear. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Usually, when you grow a beard, you get like a little bit of it, like an like, angry yeah, demeanor. I know. Like you, like, like, you want to give a little, you know, a little scratch yeah. over the chin. Yeah. <laughs> It's like a Viking on the outside, teddy bear on the inside. Like, what's yeah, going on, you know? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But in the 100%, you're right about New Zealand. They deserve more more opportunities. Like, I think they New Zealand... much did... more. That's the thing. They really cannot do much more. Yeah. And you know what they do, you know what they do in New Zealand, though, when it comes to mm. test cricket or when a, whenever, whenever a high-profile country visits New Zealand um, mm. and they play a test match, they always start the test match on a Thursday or Friday. Okay. Okay. And then that way, the, the, the test match finishes on the Monday... But the two pivotal days, day three and four, on the weekend. Yeah, on the weekend. So that's how they try to. That's how they try to build the revenue and try to get people to come to the matches. That's really good. They've obviously got the numbers to back that, obviously. Right. Um. So that's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. And so this is how New Zealand, within their own country, are trying to build popularity for cricket. Um. Mm -hmm. But you know, we need to see more support from the ICC and and, and stuff like that. Um. Yeah. But look, you know, this this episode has flown by. We're literally almost at the end, Hasif. Um. Are we? But any, I really yeah, we this one, one. Hey? Can we keep going? Can we keep, keep going? going? Look, we we keep, I mean, we can keep going. I don't really mind. Um. <laughs> I know. I know you of all people don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> this is your one well, look, chance to shine. The last probably like three to four weeks. I haven't had a whole episode on test cricket in ages. Oh, You've had all. I'm, I'm loving this. First. I'm not mentioning your stupid, you know, IPL and. This league. Oh and... my goodness! You better, you better <laughs> cut that out, man, before we lose all of our Indian supporters. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I mean, I, I like IPL. I think IPL is great. Um, oh, you can't, you can't, you lying. Nah, he's can't, lying now. Can't, can't, so can't he's... backtrack from here, can we? <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, this is all you do. You do this. <laughs> Damn, I was trying to pull you down with me, but no, it's all. It. <laughs> <laughs> but look, uh, look, it's signing off. I mean, um, the next, the you know, the, the ODI series starts between India and Australia very shortly. So, you know, you we're, we're, all, we're all pumped up for that. Um, mm -hmm. And then the second test starts with uh, Sri Lanka and New Zealand shortly as well. You know, your your sort of predictions, overviews, uh, you know, what do, what do you expect to happen, uh, especially with the ODI series coming up with India and Australia? Yeah, India and Australia, yeah. I think that'll be, obviously, there'll be way more of a, um, I guess, sort of... Um, significance for the curators to put importance on scoring runs oh yeah so i think it'll be yeah. more, more really based uh it'll yeah. be more entertaining for us um mm. as, as as viewers and even casual mm. viewers will probably tune into that a lot more yeah um we have um you know cameron green is actually someone that i've i've, I've slowly <laughs> crept up to enjoy watching <laughs> yeah. um he's getting a lot of backing um from, from the great media. Up. yeah i was oh, gonna say oh, <laughs> We don't need to talk about that, but yeah. um, he's actually doing very well. And I think um, yeah. the fact that he scored the ton that he did, yeah, um, it was a super important one for someone like myself who was sort of mm. like on the on the edge. I wasn't sure how I felt about him. You yeah, know, the two point three Australian dollars, two point three million Australian dollars he got from the IPL, I didn't quite understand it. But mm. um, the more that he performs the way that he does, the more yeah. that I can see the value in him. And mm. um, like you mentioned, the great cricketer, a lot of the guys are saying that this is or he is the future mm. of Australian cricket. Yeah. Um, that's a big call to make. Uh, but Huge. the more that he continues to play, I, I can see it happening. Yeah. Huge. Uh, I mean, even I didn't rate even I didn't rate Cameron Green highly. I thought he was a good cricketer. Mm -hmm. I thought he deserved to play for Australia, mm -hmm. but I thought he might have become like a he might become like a Shane Watson type character because to be that tall, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that can go wrong with a body like that, um, just injury wise. Exactly. But but look, he's still around. He's still young. He's still got a lot of he's got so much cricket in him. Um, yeah. I'm I'm excited to see the journey of Cameron Green as well. Um, 
But we'll look, we will we'll, we'll, uh, we will wrap it up here. Um, but second test between Sri Lanka and New Zealand, what what's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think the main thing that I'm looking out for is whether Nirushan Dick or Lalu Dicky, mm. as you and I like to call him. Um, yes. For his stature, obviously, he's a, he's a, he's a small man. <laughs> yes, he is. Um, wonder if he will get picked or not. Um, I am not really convinced. Um, as yeah. you said, he dropped a, a very, very pivotal catch of Kane Williamson and didn't really yeah. back it up with the bat as well. I really, yeah. I was telling my dad as well while we were watching the test match, mm. um, all we needed from him was a quick 30 or 40. Yep. That's all we need. We didn't need him to stay in there and do anything no. too crazy. No. String mm. together 30 or 40, which is which is way he bats, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. He doesn't get a consistent run in the national side. This was yeah. this was a rare chance for him, and mm. he really messed up, which is very very disappointing to see because I've backed him a lot in the past. Yeah, um, but I think if we are to produce our best eleven to win the next game, he probably needs to go, and yeah. we need someone else who's more, uh, you know, more of a batsman um, or a batting mm. all rounder. Mm. Um, but I do mm. think that Sri Lanka hopefully will win the next one just because yeah. I felt like they play with a lot of heart. They do. And if yeah. the Williamson catch was taken, I mm. genuinely think that Lanka probably would have would have gotten over them. Oh, absolutely. I yeah. think uh, for me, um, yeah, Nirshan Dikwil had a really bad game. He scored seven in the first innings, and then he made a, Big fat blob. A, yeah, a, a four-ball duck in the second innings. And then yeah. not only that, he dropped a, a crucial catch as well. So, yeah, I mean, his, his position in the team is definitely under threat. Um, it'll be surprising to see him play the second test but yeah i'd like to see someone else take his place mm -hmm. um i mean who would you have in 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 instead of dick well oh who would i have you know what um we saw a sub fielder come on late in the day we said jamaica oh, Karana 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 Karana. goodness me that's think, a name i think i think he's the x factor that that is you never know what you're going to get with him mm. but he does play with a lot of heart and it's very very evident in his body language sometimes over the top but um he does play with a lot of pride and i think that's what we need in the the middle to low order with the bat yeah and mm -hmm. he can, he's obviously quite handy with the ball as well as he's shown so i think he's a very very good asset to have i've got a i've got a fun fact about charming i thought you know i'm always full of fun facts <laughs> i don't know if they're fun but you're definitely full of facts <laughs> like, like, I there's skepticism <laughs> in your face already like <laughs> no nah, i don't like where this is going <laughs> So me, when Charmiga Karanatha's first ever match for Sri Lanka was a test match. He made his yeah. he made his first uh played his first game in a test match, test debut back in 2019. And uh he played in Canberra actually against Australia. Mm -hmm. And uh I think he just debuted as a fast medium bowler. Um but so you know he has he definitely has some test experience, I suppose. But yeah, interesting, interesting selection. Um I would like Is to see what you'd pick up instead. I'm thinking. I'm. I'm just trying to think. There was a. There was a, a really good off spinner for Lanka who played against Australia. I think his name was Ramesh Mendis. Ramesh um, Mendis, yeah, he's very good. He can bat too, actually. Yeah, Ramesh That's Mendis a is a. He's another guy I'd like to. I'd like to see because Sri Lanka's uh, strength is spin. Um, yep. We saw Prabhat Jaisir took some crucial wickets before he started getting smashed. But like, mm. it would have been good to have uh, like a, another specialist spinner support Prabhat Jaisir. Um, okay. You know, I love watching Daranjay the Silver Ball. I think he was a bit more than a part timer, but it would be nice to have Thank like. A... <laughs> no, I like his bowling. We waited, we waited a fair few episodes to get that kind of recognition from. Oh, our boy really? Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, here he comes. Yeah. You want to for a while? Goods. I'll be honest. I didn't rate him for a while, but but look, <laughs> I've watched DDS ball and he's he's doing all right now. But um, but I would I wouldn't mind seeing uh, Ramesh Mendis get another test because uh, yeah. when he so played you'd opt against for another Rafi as opposed to a, a medium pacer. I think. Lanka's pace attack right now is is ideal. I think they've got okay. the right balance of pace balls to to handle the the green wickets of New Zealand. Yeah, our strength is spin, right? Yeah, all the all the big all the big partnerships that were broken were through spin, right? So mm. I would love to see another specialist spinner support Prabhat, um, in that in that regards. And Ramesh is a decent batsman too, so that's my pick. Bat, yeah. yeah. So who do you but, have to keep then? Can well, I mean, one quick question before you wrap up: Who would you, uh, wrap who would you up, have to keep? Well, I mean, Chandimal used to keep, and Chandimal is a decent keeper. Um, mm -hmm. Wouldn't mind him as the keeper. Kusal Mendes has also kept as well, but I don't, I don't really rate Kusal Mendes as like a proper keeper. He can keep, he can keep, right? It's like you know, it's like it's like when Rahul Dravid used to keep for India. You know what I mean? Like this guy. Are you serious? You gonna, you gonna? <laughs> yep. You have to say something controversial before we. 
Oh, no. you always do this, man. You no, always like, do this. You, 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 some menis yeah. can keep really well. Rahul Dravid's got good hands. He's got good hands. He's a way better course. slipper. Yeah. But um, yeah. But, but Chandimal is a keeper for me, I reckon. That's that's yeah. where I'd sort of leave it at. But look, uh, we've come to the end of another episode. Thank you to all our wonderful listeners and viewers because we're obviously on YouTube as well. Um, thanks for tuning into this episode. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you next week for episode. Just a quick eight. shout out, sorry, you know what? Just a quick shout out for those listening in on uh, on our podcast. If you search yeah. in the salmon on YouTube, you will find every episode. I think for the last three or four. Mm-hmm. Um, online, and you get to see our beautiful faces. Exactly um, right. So, if you're exactly wondering right. what Nuan and I look like, <laughs> we're online. We're yeah. online. Come check us out. Subscribe, um, and, and all the rest of it. Show, show your family. Show your nan. So you don't have to yes. watch the the cooking shows on Friday night. That's it. That's it. But uh, yeah, there's two there's two wonderful, beautiful, handsome brown boys sharing their views on the game. But look, uh, that was a, that was a brilliant shout, out, Hasik. We'll we'll wrap it up there. Um, thanks always for joining me on the on the show. I'm keen for next week where we uh, unpack the India ODI Australia series. But uh, but yeah, we're just signing off here, and it's uh, goodbye for now. Perfect. See you guys. Have a good week. Hey, bro, you can come back on now. All right.